Hello, my name is Mika Järvinen. Uh, I'm an associate professor at Aalto University. The topic of this short uh, video lecture is now intermittency of renewables. Um, I will discuss also capacity factors and requirement for energy storage. Let's go. So capacity factors, what, what, what does this mean? Uh, we all know that sun does not shine during the night or when it's cloudy, and, and also wind doesn't blow all the time. Uh, capacity factor is a, a variable that tells us uh, how, how much of the actual power, uh, uh, actual power can be produced uh, from the maximal, maximum capacity of the rated power. So I try to explain this with an example. Uh, for example, if we get annually 50,000 kilowatt hours power from 50 kilowatt solar PV power plant, then the capacity factor of this system is 50,000 kilowatt hours divided by the, the label power 50 kilowatts times the hours uh, of a year. So the simply this, we do the math and we get 11.4%. 11 so in a way, if we have a high efficient system, this would be a case in Finland, we get only 11.4% of that, that available power from the system. This is uh, how it's defined for, for this uh, solar PV system. But then let's take a look at the a practical example. This uh, figure is from Global Solar Atlas. You can also log into Global, Glo Global Solar Atlas yourself and check this. And the, the, the scale is here uh, uh, capacity factors for solar. And I have marked here Hanko, Southern Finland, and Namibia in, in South Africa. Capacity factor of solar uh, in, in Hanko, Helsinki is 13% at maximum. And when we go to Namibia, it two, it's two times higher. But let's then take a look at the global wind atlas. This is also available for you. I recommend it. it's a really nice tool. Then it's different here. So at Hanko, it's a quite windy conditions here in, in uh, Finland, up north here. So the capacity factor of wind power at, at Hanko is almost 60%, while capacity factor of wind in Namibia is half of that. So the ratio of these is now the opposite. And that also means that, that uh, when we uh, change the location in the world uh, around the Earth, we the different technologies are, are, are preferable. Uh, this is another example uh, I, I made for you. So the figure below here shows the needed electricity in Helsinki. And this is data from uh, 2015. And, and since uh, if we are using uh, renewable energy, uh, it's intermittent and we need uh, large-scale large energy storage. And this is what I try to explain. But this is the... Uh, energy, how much power is needed in Helsinki, and then this uh, this orange curve now shows the production of a big uh, uh, wind f f uh, offshore wind park outside of Helsinki on the sea, on the sea, and we see that the the wind power generation varies a lot, and there are even days that have no wind at all. But the maximum cap or rated power of the wind park is about slightly above uh, 700 megawatts. Uh, and so this is the rated power. And we see that from the figure that when the orange curve, so the production is higher than the, uh, the need, we have surplus, so we, then we can charge our energy storage. And when the the, the production is less than the need, then we need to take energy from the storage. So that this is the charging of the energy storage. And based on this, this data, we can quite easily calculate how much energy can be stored and how much is needed to take away from the storage. So production minus consumption 
is, is this figure. And we see that we need, first of all, we, see an init, we need to have an initial storage of 200,000 uh, megawatt hours uh, starting of the year. And then during the cold winter, the wind power is not enough. So we need to use the storage. So discharge the storage. Almost it goes to zero at around 2,000 2, hours. And then during the summer, we are consuming less electricity and then we can charge uh, the storage and again in the, in the fall we need to discharge to meet the meet the requirement. Uh, so the the maximum energy storage here is roughly uh, 380 uh, gigawatt hours as, as a reference Helsinki electricity consumption uh, that year was uh, th uh, 4300 gigawatt hours. And how to what what kind of storage we, we could have just as a simple and simplified example we could have for example pumped hydro so reversed hydropower in principle so we would then need a tank uh, of of two like a tank that has a diameter of two kilometers depth of 160 meters and this would be lifted fully 200 meters above the the uh, the level of the of the sea or the, uh, the there was a river flowing and very large so this is you see that this is very large and and we don't have this kind of mountains uh, available at Helsinki area at the moment how about then battery uh, you know have have seen a lot of discussion in for example on lithium iron batteries and at the moment the largest system in in the world is in Moss Landing in California this was started this summer and it has a capacity of 1600 megawatt hours and and to match the need in Helsinki we would need 240 of these so not not really a uh, full solution so this also tells that in order to to solve the green energy transition we really need to develop these uh, energy storage options uh, and there's uh, still a lot of work to be done but thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. So here is my email. Please send email and we can continue discussing. Thank you.